Uh, but primary prevention is important and we should uh, look at it because the data for primary prevention is even more tenuous. And if you collect all the data, you come across certain very important points. Number one point is that primary prevention does not seem to help women in terms of mortality reduction whatsoever. So there is no clinical trial that shows mortality reduction in women for primary prevention. So let's define primary prevention. Primary prevention means somebody who's not had a cardiac event, like no heart attacks, no stents, no bypass surgery. Now, people ask me, well, I do have some plaque buildup because I have a calcium score that is a certain amount, so that indicates that I have plaque buildup. That person, if they have not had a cardiac event, would still fall in the category of primary prevention. But let's make it a little simpler for some people, and let's take the data that you have zero calcium score. If you have zero calcium score, there are studies that point out that even up to about a decade with statins and zero calcium score, you get no benefit. So if you have a zero calcium score in the right clinical setting, they don't need a statin. Now, if you fall outside this category, you are a middle-aged ma male and you're taking statins for primary prevention, in that group of people, if you treated 100 people with statins for one year, in terms of mortality reduction, it will be one-tenth of 1%. One-tenth of 1%. That means 99.9 .9 would not benefit for that one year, 0.1 would benefit. Of course, that's not how it is presented to the, uh, to the physicians who are prescribing these drugs because they are looking at what is called relative risk reduction. And, and I love Malcolm Kendrick, and I love the way he describes relative risk reduction. The chances of winning the Texas Lotto is one in 15 million. And I come and say, I'm gonna increase your chances of winning by 100%. And my uh, patients would think, for sure, I'm gonna win it. But all I'm doing is I'm increasing your chances of winning from one in 15 million to two in 15 million because the difference between one and two is 100%. So that's why in primary prevention trials, the quoted number is 20%, 30%, depending on the trial. But when you look at absolute risk reduction, it's about one-tenth of 1% 1 for mortality reduction in 100 people treated who are middle-aged men. So on the basis of that, you're going to give a drug to somebody for about 30 to 50 years, is that something that you want to make a decision as a physician on your own? Do you want to empower the patient to make the right decision? Do you want to discuss with the patient about the potential side effects? I think that's where our medical profession is lacking in terms of critical thinking for themselves. I think we rely too much on key opinion leaders, on societies to make decisions for us, 